Welcome once again to another edition of the Brattlecast. We're talking about books, old, rare, and out of print, and a whole lot of other things that relate to books, and it's one of my favorite subjects. I'm Jordan Rich, and here is my favorite guy to interview on the subject, Ken Gloss, proprietor of the famous Brattle Bookshop in Boston, an absolute historic institution here. Now, we've talked before about books that you've come across that you have a knowledge of that have inscriptions, and sometimes uh, it can add value to the book, certainly. But we thought we'd delve into the inscription issue today, and you've got some examples that you brought along with well, you. Well, I, br- I brought along one in particular. It, the title is The Oasis or Golden Leaves of Friendship. It's called a, a gift book. It's done in Boston in the 1850s. And what it is, it was usually they're very nicely bound uh, decorative cloth or leather. Uh, there's poetry. There are some illustrations, maybe some stories. But it's all sort of what you might call today sort of sappy, uh, you know, uh, very light. But one of the things that I always do when I get one of these books is I always look in the front of it because many times there's an, an inscription in the front of writing and sometimes it's telling the love of one person for another or or a relative giving it to a, uh, a younger relative mm-hmm. or – Whatever, but the, a lot of these inscriptions, they're not valuable. They don't add tremendously. But this one, uh, marriage token to the Mr. John G. Warren, uh, to Sophie Warren, uh, from a friend. So this might have been a book given on their wedding by a friend of them to the Warrens. Now, Warren is a very famous name in the Boston area. Uh, there were... Uh, the doctors, Warren. Uh, from uh, Paul Revere's ride. And then Mass General Hospital. So uh, it's a family that yeah. runs through. Now, I don't know which branch of this family or whether it just some— Somebody ran, else named Warren. Ran, someone named Warren. But I I love these kind of books. Like I say, I open to the front because you sometimes see to my dear so-and-so who I miss so much and and— you sort of realize that it's fun. It's fun reading through these. It's it's a different era. You look at the handwriting. Yeah, we and, were and commenting it, on that. It's so beautiful, cursive, beautifully hand, handwritten. Well, well, it was before people had typewriters. Exactly. For, and and although some handwriting's hard, handwriting used to be a little bit better because you actually had to read it. And no doubt a fountain pen. Because yeah, definitely pre pre ballpoint. <laughs> pre pre ballpoint, no question about that. Yeah. But there are I know people who just collect books for these kind of inscriptions. Uh, in other words, it's not necessarily big budget. In other words, they're not looking for it's signed by Hemingway or it's signed by James Joyce or Abraham Lincoln. Although, if one said, you know, if you had a book of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, you know, uh, signed to a friend. Or, or dear Mary, enough uh, with the shopping, you know. Could, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> if you had that, I mean, that's in a whole different right. range. So we're talking about what some people might just pass over. It, it's to you and to people in our world. This is, first of all, it's history come alive. These people feel alive again to well, us. Yeah, they feel alive. But then you also realize, although the wording might be slim, what off? The sentiment in the Valentines yeah. in uh, gift books and when you, you go to the, the card store and hopefully most of them are a little bit better than some of the cards you read. But uh, I would imagine, Ken, that th- through all the wars prior to, say, maybe even up to World War II, a, a great number of things have been dedicated to people going off to war or – Sweethearts at home, that kind of yeah, thing. or or not coming back from war oh, and, yeah. and so on, yeah, absolutely. And but the nice thing about these for the collectors is, if you go into a used rare bookstore, you go into a yard sale, you go to a library sale, you go to almost anywhere there might be a book, you could end up looking at every single one of them because you cannot tell by the cover mm-hmm. if there's a nice little inscription. In the inside of it, in the sentiment that it it tells, and I and you can even get very specific in this. Uh, I know one person who does collect ones that seem to be either proposals or marriages. Another person collects ones that are from 
older relatives to younger relatives. So, you, I mean, you can take off in almost any direction you want, but probably the price point that you're dealing with is maybe 10 or $20 at the high end. Uh, so it makes a very affordable collection. It makes it also fun. One of the things when you travel, if, assuming you have some time, it, you, and it also can be very aggravating, I can say, too, <laughs> as being a child of a father who – is that almost any time you go by an antique store or bookstore or whatever – person who collects something like this might find it in that store, in the next store. And next thing you know, every 15 minutes, you're stopping by the side of the road at this little, sometimes nice antique store, sometimes junk shop, and they're excited because, wow, look at this a, a shelf of books here. Obsessive, cursive discovery, OCD. I just right. made that up. <laughs> and, and, then, and then everybody else in the car is going, oh, no. Here he goes again. Here he goes again. But... What I'm trying to say a little bit in this is you don't have to collect what everybody else is collecting. And matter of fact, if you collect what everybody else isn't collecting, you can put together a really fascinating collection that you could write about and uh, that would be fascinating for someone else and not spend a lot of money. To our fellow bibliophiles who are loving this conversation, uh, what I like about what you're saying is it, it – points out the lifelong uh, existence of these books that live beyond generations. You know, a book is something that you don't throw away. You give it to somebody else and they give it to somebody else maybe. But this is what – it just seems like a beautiful human trail uh, of connection that the books form. Well, that's exactly what it is. And you, and, and you can – depending on what your interest is, depending on what you're like – you can go into many fields. I, I know an ex-employee of ours who is brilliant. And uh, this is – I get off subject sometimes and I, I go, he is writing a book about rejection letters. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, I said to him, it's for an academic. It's, it's, he's yeah. writing an academic thing. And I said, you've got to write this for the, the general oh. public. You know, it's like people – how a, a publisher rejects an author. What did they say? Uh, Hemingway used to say he papered his rooms with his rejection notices. Right, but rejection letters could also be dear John letters. When, That's true. When you said from the war, that sort of jumped. And I just said to him, if you could get just general re rejection letters. Now, I've never had a book like this inscri scribed in such a way, dear dear Fanny, I never want to see you again. <laughs> but, But... That would be the real one. Uh, yeah, that and, would be real. And, and just as we talk about it, I see you smiling. And, I, and if you can pick a subject like that that you're interested in, that you like, maybe your collection will be these type of inscribed books. Well, in, in a way, it's not eavesdropping because that's using your, your ears, but it's, it's poking into somebody else's life. And it's, and it's totally acceptable because they're gone, so, so many of these people. And – but they left an indelible mark. They left this inscription. Yeah. Uh, I love the idea. You know, well, and, the it, idea. and it's the same. The, the wording might be a little different. The handwriting might be a little different. But it's universal. It's t it, totally. You know, you read one of these from 150 years ago. And in many ways, that could have just as easily have been done on a book last year or this year. Uh, and... So when people are asking me, what should I collect sometimes, I point out a subject like this and say, whatever turns you on. And the hunt is so much of the fun. Well, the other part about a collection like this is, let's say you collect an author like Dickens. There's, it can go on through a lot, but basically there's a finite number of books. Maybe there are articles and pamphlets. In this it's, nev it's never ending. Infinite. <laughs> yes, the, the never ending story. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, uh, the inscription on this podcast will be Dear Podcast, thank you for all this. Uh, dear Ken, thank you for all this uh, uh, information, esoteric as it might be, uh, because it's just so much fun. You wouldn't be here if you weren't having as much fun. And, and you wouldn't have me here if we both <laughs> weren't having a lot of fun. Exactly. Thank so, you. Thank you. 
BrattleBookshop.com, of course, is the website. Find out more about this podcast, but also find out more about all the great activities. And check them out on Instagram, too, because that's a vastly popular social media platform for this organization. We'll see you next time, Ken. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.